Hey everybody, Texas Trucker here at Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. 11 p.m. out here Saturday night, trying to have a good time. And we're going to do that by throwing down, I swear, I hit record and here come the text messages every single time. It's just nuts. But uh, this right here, back to what we're talking about, channel lock hook and pick set uh, obviously these are many these are not going to be like giant picks they're not going to be like hose removal picks they're small keep that in mind case in point there's a tape measure right so just rough length over here for you before we even crack these open longest one will be the straight guy you're looking at less than five and a half inches so keep that in mind a lot of times uh, particularly like with the old acetate handled picks that sort of preceded these you might even find places that advertise that um, if they have old stock or they just don't update their images, this type of a design right here. If you see that, it's the same thing. This is sort of like superseding it as best I can tell. So if you do want the acetate picks or you have some and you love them and you want to pick them up, might be the time to do that. Don't hold me to that. I'm just kind of going with what I believe I've witnessed. So, uh, these right here, channel lock four piece hook and pick set part number HP dash four a. In fact, if you like look at these, if you try to find these like I did for forever, you will often see this image, but then all of the standalone product images will be of the acetate handle. So it gets really confusing. You'll probably want to send emails if you're unsure of what you're getting uh, to avoid the risk of being disappointed. Uh, next thing over under the part number, you've got 100% made in the USA. Now, I don't believe Channel Lock is behind these. I believe this is Mayhew. I've tried. There's about three products from Mayhew. That's uh, going back to like 2021, you know, when they announced their new products. You can go on their website if you want to. There's literally three items. Now, they didn't all come out in 2021 or like get announced. Uh, some of them were announced last year. But I've tried and tried and tried, and uh, I just can never seem to find the things in stock. So that's why you haven't seen them here. Uh, if I can ever find them in stock, I fully intend to purchase them. I'm not going to tell you what they are, because that would ruin future videos. But uh, this is essentially, I do believe, again, some of you may know for sure, or can correct me if I'm wrong. But if I was a gambling man, I would venture to guess that these were made by Mayhew and of course you know private label uh, for channel lock type of a thing so they get the sweet channel lock blue and I want to say Mayhew's have a black shaft where these are sort of like a uh, according to the packaging I think it's a brilliant finish <laughs> I think uh, that remains to be seen but uh, anyway we're going to come up here and continue checking out the features here high performance handle so that's uh, good to know trying to get this to not <laughs> get blurry on us which is hard with the blister pack rugged high alloy u.s steel blades vibrant polished shaft you know i'm not cranking your chain here that's literally what it says and it very well could be we'll get to take a look at it here in a second the set includes the small pick a small 90 degree pick a small complex probe and a small 180 degree hook I don't think I've ever read small complex probe on any picks that I've owned, but hey, it is what it is. Now, what I'm hoping for, I started to cut into this before filming because it's one of those blister packs that just looks like it would be annoying, but I saw this and I thought, is that one of the good ones? And I pulled a little and it was starting to come apart. So, okay, it's not going to be one of the easier release guys. But we'll just muscle our way into it. So, we're going to throw that over. I was trying to keep this intact. That's why I don't just rip it really fast. This is what I want to highlight because it's going to be product details that might be pertinent for you. So, high performance handle is heat stable, stabilized and modified to provide excellent abrasion protection, impact resistance, and this is probably the most important thing for some of you, chemical tolerance. So your hands are filthy, your hands are dirty, you go grab the tool, these should be able to withstand that over what just cracked. <laughs> I don't think it was the blister pack, I think it's this can of spray foam and I'm getting a little worried. It's like giving me the side eye right now. Uh, moving on, cautiously, to point two. Rugged high alloy U.S. steel blades are vacuum heat treated for ultimate performance. Three, vibrant polished shaft provides a non-porous finish and coated for 
Well, that should probably be and is coated for corrosion resistance. Four. Well, this is a big one for some of you. Channel lock blue, man. That color just never gets old. Uh, solid grip reduces fatigue and maximizes torque. And perhaps most importantly, especially for the price point, 100% made in the USA. So there we are. And what is the price point? If I haven't mentioned it, this is going to vary depending on where you find these, but you're probably not going to spend over 20 bucks on this set which is super cool so uh, i guess we need to orient them this way for the ocd people otherwise you have to flip your head upside down to stare at your monitor to read and we don't want that we want to make this as simple and enjoyable as possible for you so this is it i want to say i gave 14.99 i've seen them in 14.95 ish all the way up to like 25 be cautious when you buy things, you know, like especially if you're going from the jungle, you might see something and get it. And it's like, you just cost yourself $10, you know? So I think anywhere like 15 to 20 ish, you should feel safe and pretty good about it. Now, obviously I haven't used these, so I can't speak for anything, but let's come into the one that I would be most likely to grab and use. They're a little dirty, I'm not gonna lie. I flip this thing over and it's like, hey, that's not from my hand. My hands were clean today. It's a little, little disappointing on the seams here. Now this is nitpicking. I mean, this has nothing to do with the actual performance of the tool. Uh, it's actually kind of, it's almost like there is an adhesive on the shaft there too, but you can see what I'm talking about, sort of like the mold line and then it's not like cleaned up right. So like that is noticeable to the eye and it's more importantly noticeable to your hand. So uh, it's not a huge deal at all, but it's something that we have to make note of as we critique these. So AWL 2A now, this is the straight guy. So let's, let's grab the complex probe and see, I'm assuming it'll have a standalone part number. <laughs> and indeed it does. This is the A, PRBA, which that's going to be the complex probe. Note that it says USA. Hey, this guy's way nicer of a finish. Is that a different handle style too? What's what's the difference? <laughs> Let me find Mr. Safety Glass here. And we're gonna go piece by piece. So they are oriented and labeled the same for the OCD crowd. You can see that one, I'm not making that up. It was black. Almost like it was tested and used or something. This one doesn't have the mold line. Like right there through the safety glass guy. Look how mint that one is. And then using my small complex probe, <laughs> I'm going to highlight my point of contention there. You can see the sloppiness here. And then when we flip it over, like this is all, this is not me. Like my hands, if I get something dirty, I will fully own up to it. This is the tool right there, I'm tracing it. So when I come to this guy, this one's like immaculate. <laughs> Okay, I can see the part line now, but it's not near as egregious, like it just blends like it should. If I come back over here, that might be the most noticeable thing. And again, I do see the part line, but it's just like, it released way better for some reason. So let's jump in. I'm going to set that at the top of the Omega M. We'll get this one in, reset our focus if we can. If we can, thank you. Come on. Oh, Lord. You know, what do I do wrong in life to deserve this? Okay, thank you. So, this one looks to be really good, too. Huh. How about that? That's even really good on the back end. So, uh, this one I actually do use a lot as well. But right here, you've sort of got your... This one's good for getting like O-rings out and stuff. Granted, you know, you might want a spoon for that. Well, it's personal preference, I suppose. There's your part line. It's consistently done all the silk screening and everything. This one's smooth as well. Now that's probably the roughest looking, but it's, that's going to be a non-factor. Like I don't have any issues with that feel at all. This one though, sadly, the one that I would use the most, it's like the clunkiest of the bunch. Go figure. Uh, I mean, I'm not making that up. Like, this one is pretty, like, come on. You know, I'm not saying they should have, like, scrapped it and thrown it away, but I'm saying, like, you know, maybe put it in, like, the seconds bin or something, you know? Or, like, if a guy breaks one and it's got a warranty, maybe, like, send him a freebie and it's, like, 
he gets the good replacement and then one of these two. I don't know. It's not like objectionably bad, but it is noticeable. I want to stress that. It's not like it's going to affect the function of the tool, but it's like, you know, running your hand across it, you feel that for sure. So, uh, kind of, I hold Channel Lock and Mayhew to high standards. They are American made, granted at great price points, both brands universally. And that's kind of what I want to talk about next. You can get a set of these for anywhere from like free to a dollar ninety nine to probably nine ninety nine some of your sort of more expensive offshore brands are probably going to push well past the fifteen dollar mark where i'm at with these uh they're probably not going to be in as desirable of a color that's personal preference of course but this is u.s steel and that's what's important when you buy a pick not that it's u.s steel but that it's high quality steel uh, that's something that you can typically bank on with U.S. Steel. Now, when you get this junk from offshores, you get some really jinky. You either get, like, a good one that's surprisingly, like, indestructible, you know, or you just get, like, buttery soft or it's really hardened too much and it's super brittle and the first thing you do with any leverage at all, the tip is gone. Uh, and if it doesn't do that, it's just, like I said, it's way too soft and you could push into the housing on a transmission and ball it up. So what I'm going to do is I want to compare these size in. So some of you, if you watch my channel, you'll be familiar with these. These are the Stavilla picks. And uh, again, I don't believe they're German made, but this is something that you've seen before. Or you've seen me use them probably in the Ram Revival. But more importantly, uh, these have been used unlike those. And it's a situation some of you might have grabbed one or two of these and we can compare uh, the ends. So we're going to grab Stavilla versus Channel Lock. And interestingly, again, these are advertised as micro picks to be fair. But if you thought the Stavilla was small, <laughs> look at that. Now, this is also a selling point because if you have this and you can use this as your baseline, you can deduce, hey, you know, like that's exactly what I need. I need a tighter tolerance. I need a better clearance. Some of you on the flip side might want something larger. Keep in mind with both of these picks, they are not designed to be hose picks, you know, like giant radiator hoses, right? These are more intricate, delicate work. <laughs> if you will so keep that in mind and pick your poison these are very very comfortable i think these are too and uh, over time i'll actually wear that thing down on the straight one but um case in point what i want to showcase next you should be able to tell let's go ahead i'm going to zoom in my apologies and right here okay if you look at the channel lock pick the one i'm kind of moving right now it comes to a point, and you can clearly see that, right? If I go now only to the Stavilla, it comes to a point, but if it looks like there's a bent shoe on it, a little tang that sticks up, that's because there is. I've used this enough that I've balled it up. And I could file that off, I could put it on the grinder real quick, you know, it's not a huge deal. But as you do that, you know, it gets harder and harder to kind of maintain that finite tip like you had when the tool was new. Case in point, listen. I don't know if you're going to hear that, so let me do this. See how it kind of hangs up right there at the tip where it should just fly off? It's actually getting hung. That's again because it's balled up like that. What I do the majority of the time with these picks is like deep in stuff and release, you know, like pins and levers, you know. Uh, it's not like asking much of them. This straight one, again, which is probably my most frequently used, it does the same thing. So... If I zoom back in, you'll see right there, I think it's pretty easy to tell. If it looks like it's kind of coming up and then it's going this direction, that's because you can actually see right here, like, I'm going to come to this finger that's got no marring on it. <laughs> and that's from that bald end right there. So it just sort of, like I said... You either get tips that are hardened too much and they just shatter, or you get something that's like kind of a little soft and it'll ball up like this. So now these very well could do the same thing, but we don't know because we haven't used them. So I'm going to be looking forward to finding that out. In my opinion, you need at least two sets of picks. Why? In the event that one balls up or breaks, right? If it breaks, you probably lose access and the point of what you're doing, quite literally, the point of what you were doing. 
<laughs> so uh, keep that one in mind. The good news is, since these are different links, it's almost like you're getting a backup set and a set with different utility type of a thing. Uh, if you do go the route of the four-piece set, you've got your straight, you've got your 90 degree, you got your hook, and then where they do the complex probe with a very sharp, almost triangular deal, this one's a little bit more lazy. You'll note that it kind of comes up and down. It's more like a hill. This channel lock style, while it maintains a similar profile, and it is a little bit smaller, it's kind of more like a uh, mountain, if you will. You can kind of see what I'm talking about. Real, real gradual on the Stav Villa, much more aggressive on the channel lock. So this is a long, drawn-out, you know, Booker movie, and this is a shorter one, right? You kind of hit the climax, and you go down. So, uh, like I said, I point that out for two reasons. One, uh, it's good to know that in your backup set, you've actually got some, you know, diversity. And, of course, uh, it sort of opens up different windows for you. Now, coming in, the other picks, which I have not used these yet. Actually, I might have used the uh, 90, but these are the bits. And uh, they are notably bigger than the Stavilla, which are notably larger than the Channel Lock. Which, you know what that means. You are totally justified to purchase all three of these sets because they're different lengths, and that, sir, benefits you. And it's simply another arsenal tool in your box. So, uh, realistically, this kind of comes down to what you're doing and what you prefer. I'm of the mindset, like, this is more comfortable than this, that's more comfortable than this, but that's due to the size. If I could get a micro pick set that had a giant handle on it, I would probably be happy. That said, if I've got my hand over here and I can't see what I'm doing, that's not good. This is sort of more of the pin approach, right? So you're probably going to come in and use it like this. If I had a harness here, we would come in, we would release and depin things. Uh, if we're trying to come in, a lot of times I'll use the 180 uh, to release clips. So you come in, you slide it under, and then I just turn it, and that's sometimes enough to get it up and over. You can kind of pick your poison here, and like I said, you are fully justified to also own all three of these sets. Why? Because they're different links, that's why. So, uh, let me know if you have used the Channel Lock or the Mayhew picks. How long you've had them, I realize these are new, new, new tools. You probably haven't had them very long, but if you purchased them, it's probably because you needed them. So, have they held up? Have they been amazing? Are they junk? Uh, did you have like a bad batch and the second one that you got was amazing? Uh, how do they compare to what you had previously? Would you recommend the channel locks? Would you recommend your cheap picks? Do your orange handled Harbor Freight specials still amaze you after 15 years type of a thing? Uh, definitely leave your comments down below. Why? Because it helps people decide what to buy. In my opinion, I don't really think you can get especially the price like, you see these vids and you're like, oh, it was probably like a $40 set. No, no, no. We're cheap. We got them on Tool of the Day. Okay. Or actually, I didn't. I got the set for my nephew on Tool of the Day because I bought these like a day or two before. Like, you go figure. It's life, right? But uh, these have been good to me and they have been used a lot. But sadly, they're kind of meeting the same fate that all of my picks meet, which is what you see here. So these channel locks, they would be the smallest picks outside of like junk. I mean, I do have some some like real junky things that are probably this size-ish, maybe a smidge smaller. But uh, they're a good size. They are micro. Keep that in mind when you purchase them. I can't stress that enough. And I think they're worth picking up whether you want. Now, if you hate channel lock blue or you don't like blue or you simply prefer red, Mayhew has the same thing. Again, I would be shocked if these were not Mayhew made and just branded for Channel Lock. And there's nothing wrong with that because, again, Mayhew is also made. And for the most part, they've both gotten, you know, like their overseas stuff. But these, 100% made in the USA. If it's a deal you want to try them out and you can't find Channel Lock, but Mayhew's in stock and you're not, like, dead set on having blue versus red, go the Mayhew route. If you prefer a black shaft, I think that's the Mayhew route, black and red. Channel Lock is kind of going to be more of a... Uh, classic American setup there, but uh, they should be the exact same thing minus some aesthetic differences. So keep that in mind. But what I can tell you at the price points, 
I think they're worth taking a risk on. So I won't be able to tell you much about these till I get some seat time with them. But bench impressions minus my most frequently used one, having sort of like a rough part line, uh, which again, I mean, I could come in and clean that up. It'll probably mold off over time as you actually use it. But uh, again, these are small, so they might not be the most comfortable thing for you, but you're also working in delicate, dainty stuff when you're using something that small. So you know the drill. But uh, I think at 15 bucks, they're worth trying out. Again, American Made, Channel Lock, and Mayhew, both great companies. And like I said, if you really want these, but you can't find them, check for the Mayhews, vice versa as well. If you really have your heart set on the red and black of Mayhew, but you can never get them and the channel locks are always there, you Walton Home Depot and see them type of a thing, might go ahead and pull the trigger and take it to town that way. I'd still like to bring the Mayhews in because I kind of wanted to have a small set at work. Um, who knows, if I can never find them in stock, we may do that. <laughs> so, uh, you got to see the size comparisons. Very small, small, and not as small right whatever you want to phrase it as you get the you get the drift there <laughs> so i do kind of like them i think they look really good again like i said if i could put like a big trilobe from a number two phillips on these i would do it but at the same time you got to keep in mind what you're doing sort of the same thing with precision screwdrivers you know you don't come in and put a whale of a handle on something like that so kind of know your limits <laughs> and possible visual obstructions if you will in that case but uh pretty happy i think that was money well spent uh, again they are kind of hard to find uh, but uh, if you if you want to track them down i think you'll be able to and once more they are 100 made in america with u.s steel so hopefully we get really good life out of them what did i do i want to see if there's a warranty on them uh, typically with channel lock, everything is warranted. I'm not, yeah, I'm sorry. It's right there at the top. What was I doing down in the fine print? I'm an idiot. It's right here. So built strong lifetime warranty. So let's say that these are of the harder variety, not the softer style. And I shatter that or the 90 degree, uh, you know, tomorrow or the next weekend in the shop. Apparently, you know, it's just typical channel lock procedure. We'll get ourselves a new one. So, uh, yeah, can't go wrong there. I mean, 15 bucks and a lifetime warranty. <laughs> like, that's a win. So, uh, like I said, this, I don't know if I could get it warranted. I feel like I could also just, like, you know, I said, file it off type of a thing. But uh, anyway, let me know your thoughts on all this. If you've had these or the Mayhews, how long? How do they compare? All that jazz. But uh, I've got the battery light flashing now, and it is pretty late. should probably head in so I can get out of here earlier tomorrow. But uh, most important thing here, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I encourage you to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts on these, even if you haven't used them, how you, which set you would purchase, perhaps. Uh, I, ironically, these are the lowest. This is cheaper than these on Tool of the Day. So keep that in mind. And the Vits, as best I know, are not German-made either. So uh, U.S. made and the best price. That's a win. So, uh, let me know how you like them, what you think about them. If you enjoy the video, leave a like. If you enjoy multiple videos, I encourage you to subscribe. Uh, if you do that, ring the bell and jump your charger across the creek. YouTube just might notify you that we got new videos every Wednesday and Saturday at 9 a.m. Texas time. The website is LoneStarMopars.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. Most important thing, I hope you have yourself a fantastic week.